The Galaxy S3 was one of Samsung's most successful products ever, and the company aims to one-up itself in 2013. But what's changed between galaxies? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S4 versus Samsung Galaxy S3. Before we get started, two things. First, these are the American variants of the Galaxy S3 and S4 because those are the review units we were able to secure, so this comparison is US-focused. Second, we have a ton of additional Galaxy S4 content on our website at pocketnow.com and here on YouTube as well. Follow us so you don't miss any of it. For the Galaxy S4, Samsung decided to iterate conservatively on the design of its 2012 flagship, presumably reluctant to change a good thing. As a result, these phones look quite similar side by side, despite the varying colors of our demo units here. But there are some significant differences between the two generations of Galaxy, and we'll be checking them out in four main areas. Hardware, UI, camera, and some test notes. Samsung pulled off quite a stunt in the construction of the S4. At first glance, it doesn't look much different than the S3, because it's not. But from a certain perspective, that's the real accomplishment here. The S4 is 3 grams lighter and a bit over half a millimeter thinner, yet it packs a larger display, 5 inches to the S3's 4.8. That Super AMOLED display is also 1080p resolution to the S3's 720p, resulting in an astonishing pixel density of 441 ppi to the S3's 306 ppi. All those numbers boil down to this. Both of these phones feature stunning screens, but the Galaxy S4's is almost impossibly sharp. It offers automatic color adjustment, some air gestures we'll get into in a while, much thinner bezels, and the protective layer shielding it from the elements is Gorilla Glass 3, not 2. It's an improvement in every possible sense, and when the software takes advantage of it, it looks fantastic. The rest of the device has also been refined. Button travel is sharper and less mushy. The cheap-looking border plastic has been replaced with a more refined ring that glints more without looking tacky. An IR port has been added, and the notification LED has been reduced in size slightly. The camera lens has been expanded, along with the sensor size, from 8 megapixels to 13, and the speaker has been moved down low and expanded significantly in size, as on the Galaxy Note 2. The whole device looks much higher end than its predecessor, though its hyperglaze coating gives it the same slick feel and hand, and it's just as adept at collecting skin grease. It's also remarkably easy to scratch. Moving inside, and once again, these are the American specs, the Qualcomm processor has taken a step up from the dual-core Snapdragon S4 to the more modern quad-core Snapdragon 600 at 1.9 GHz. LTE is, of course, still here, and the Galaxy S4 adds AC support to its Wi-Fi suite. The 2 gigs of RAM stay the same, as do the storage options, 16, 32, or 64 gigs of storage, with expandability to an additional 64 gigs via microSD. Finally, the battery gets promoted from 2100 to 2600 milliamp hours. We have more thoughts on battery life in our full review, but for now, we'll say that the increase in size has served the new device quite well. Getting past the lock screen, we can see that despite the additional Android point bump, Android 4.2.2 on the Galaxy S4 and 4.1.2 on our GS3 here, there's not much different. Sure, there's support for lock screen widgets and all the other goodies from the latest version of Jelly Bean on the S4, but TouchWiz looks almost exactly the same. There are some adjustments here, some good ones, like an expanded rearrangeable toggle area in the notification shade, and some bad ones, like a tabbed settings menu that's somehow more confusing than before. The S4 also brings easy mode for first-time smartphone users. By and large, though, those comfortable with Samsung's TouchWiz skin will have no learning curve with the look of the UI. It's the new functionality that might take some getting used to, in the form of the new Air View and Air Gesture features. Air View is familiar from the Galaxy Note 2, but here it requires no stylus. Just hovering your hand over the screen lets you preview messages, magnify text, and so on, and it's quite useful in some situations, though you do need to be careful where you put your hand. Air Gesture is less useful and more buggy, but for those who often handle their phones with dirty hands, it could prove handy once or twice. Added features like these and the new bundled S Health and S Translate apps, among others, in concert with the redesigned Samsung Hub and a refocused push on home media integration, are the big hallmarks of the S4 software as it relates to its predecessor. The new TouchWiz is familiar, yet refined. It's aging, but it works. And it's responsive, 
than usually. There's probably some additional optimization needed here, as there are a few bugs and stutters to be found, but overall, the new TouchWiz experience is a pretty standard iteration. We've talked a lot about the 5 megapixel boost in resolution on the Galaxy S4's camera over the S3's, but there are a few caveats here. The camera is capable of 13 megapixel photos, but those are captured at a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, resulting in a very square picture. So out of the box, the Galaxy S4 defaults to 9.6 megapixels at 16 by 9. That's probably the mode that most users will shoot photos in. Additionally, the Galaxy S4 camera offers a narrower field of view than the Galaxy S3. Now that means the S4 can render sharper photos, but you have to step further back to get as much in the shot. That's a pet peeve of ours. It makes us feel like we're perpetually zoomed in too far while shooting. But fortunately, the results outdoors in good light are often sharper on the Galaxy S4 with more color depth. Indoors, there's a bit more noise to the shots, and photos can easily appear washed out in some situations. The S4's camera still produces more detailed photos than its predecessor, but it's once again a marginal improvement, not a revolution. The real upgrade comes in added camera features and a UI overhaul of the viewfinder, offering a simpler Galaxy Camera-inspired interface and new fun features like animated photo, drama shot, dual shot, and others. These won't appeal to everyone, but they definitely follow the trend Samsung started with the S3 of throwing as many features as possible into a smartphone camera. Almost a year ago, we called the Sprint Galaxy S3 a solid performer in terms of voice calls, and that holds true for its successor. Solid, though, is all it is. The past year has seen some great improvements in smartphone call quality as a result of noise cancellation hardware and software, but it looks like Samsung has focused its attention elsewhere. Callers said we sounded just okay talking on the S4, and the device didn't deal with background noise like wind very well at all. Some callers said we sounded less fuzzy on the S4, but otherwise there wasn't much difference. Reception was okay in our time with the S4, but keep in mind we're comparing a Sprint unit to a Verizon one here. Sprint's 4G deployment in the greater Boston area lags significantly behind its larger counterparts. Connectivity was less reliable on Sprint, and speeds were often considerably slower. Again, that's a complaint against the network, not the device. Speakerphone calls were comparable on each device, but the speaker on the newer S4 outperformed the smaller unit on the earlier device in media playback. It's still rear-mounted on the S4, which is a shame, but it's definitely louder with a richer, fuller sound. Saying the S4 is a moderate iteration over the S3 is true, but it isn't terribly useful. The question is, does it offer enough improvements to justify the cost of buying one over the S3? Well, if you're in the market for a phone with a beastly CPU and a top-of-the-line display, inarguably one of the best you can find on any smartphone, the S4 is for you. That also applies if you're interested in an above-average camera, remote control and media hub capabilities, slightly more modern aesthetic design, and a new suite of features that are half useful, half gimmick. On the other hand, the S3 is still no slouch. It doesn't pack the latest and greatest anymore, and most American versions will likely be waiting longer and longer for updates to the newest version of Android. But it's still a great all-around smartphone, and it's going to be selling for a lot less once the S4 hits the shelves. If you're in the market for a solid, proven performer at an affordable price point, there's no shame in springing for last year's Galaxy S3. And because it looks so similar, 9 out of 10 people you pass on the street won't know the difference. Folks, we have a lot more coverage on the Samsung Galaxy S4, both here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. So follow us on social media, like I say before, so you don't miss that. Throw us a like here on YouTube if you like the video. Leave us a comment if you have some feedback. Stay tuned for a lot more from Pocket Now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.